I don't have time to show these enlarged or in close up. There, uh, my channel has a link to my MySpace page. Check these out. Enlarge them. Look at the detail. You see what I'm talking about. Here, here's what I was talking about. You see this? This is the type of covers that my submissions had on them. That's at least as good as what Marvel's own artists do for them every day. Now that's why I deserved better than a bullshit response. That's uh, Wonder Man. It's not really Wonder Man. It's a vision of Wonder Man at the end of uh, Act 1. It's all part of my story. And this right here is the reason why. I mean, if I'd have just sent them some bullshit with, uh, like, paint paper for covers. No, I sent them my artwork. That's, what, that's why I am incensed at, at the gall of these idiots who put who put out bullshit for kids fucking snobbing me when I'm better than they are. That's my point. Anybody there's nobody in that building. They they have artists, writers, what the hell ever. Can they do this shit? They can fucking try. They're not as good as me. That's that's the point. That's what pisses me off about this shit so bad is because I proved that I'm better than them and they fucking snobbed me. Well, they're not worthy to snob me. I'm snobbing them. There will come a day when they will fucking wish that they had treated me better. But it's going to be too late. It's already too late. Because, because I'm better than them, that means I can beat them. And that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to beat them at their own game. They haven't had anybody from the beginning that could complete a story. And they got people that can start a story, but they've never damn completed one. They've, ne they've never really made an impact with their stories. You know, the only thing they can do is damn make underoos for kids and pull-ups. They got that damn pull-ups for toddlers with Spider-Man on them. Fuck that shit. I ain't going that way. I ain't going that way. I'm doing real science fiction here. Now, I want to read you the title sequence for my Act 1. Now, this is never... I've, I have not... Nobody, nobody except for Marvel. I've sent my shit to Marvel for three and a half years, so they, they know about it. If they've seen it, they know about it. But other than that, I've not showed anybody my title sequence for Act 1. So, that, so this is a first. This is an exclusive right here. And it starts like this. The theme song for the... Uh, for the title sequence is, is uh, inter intermittent. There's the, uh, the the song, the music track, uh, Doris Day's uh, Que Sera Sera, whatever will be, will be, because that pertains to time. The future is not ours to see, blah, blah. It's all about time travel. That, that song, it was like it was sent to her specifically to go in this movie, because it's about what I'm writing about. And, I'll, I'll, and uh, but uh, it's, it, it's chopped up. It's not the full song. It's chopped up and uh, intermittent uh, with like uh, uh, composed music, orchestra music, you know, theme music from uh, traversing space because we're traversing space in this scene. It's a title sequence. The title sequence traverses the wonders of space in reverse. We're going in reverse. Intermittent are still photos and video clips of a futuristic battle. The first photo is an aerial view of flying airships blasting buildings. On the ground there are tanks, manned walking machines, and plasma cannon turrets. Armored troops are clashing. One side is wearing green chromed armor made of a futuristic synthetic material. The other side is wearing purple glossy armor made of a futuristic synthetic material. Transition to more reverse space travel. Then a close-up shot of Kane and Ravana on a mound fighting their way through the battle. Kang is leading his troops and wearing the same purple armor. He's also wearing a green tunic and a purple cape bearing the emblems of both Doomstat and Chronopolis. That's DC. That's like a homage that uh, Marvel and DC are friends. So I uh, put like the, the emblem or the logo of Kang on the back of his cape. I made it DC 
is like a nod to their friendly rivals over at DC. Uh, plus, there's a, also a uh, I won't get into it, but there's a scene later in uh, in the movie where there's a dream of Wonder Man dreams that he's Superman, and so that's kind of like uh, you know like buying permission to do that scene by putting the DC on the back of the uh, cape. Ravana is wearing green chrome form-fitting armor with gold accents and the blue cape. She's not wearing a helmet, only headgear. If, if you've seen Ravana in the uh, comics, you know she's got this uh, these goggles on. And uh, only headgear and goggles. More of her space travel. This time we pass Eon. That's a, a Marvel ca character that has to do with time and space. Back to the battle scene. Uh, Doris Day. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, this is the first cut for, uh, from the music track. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. And uh, while this is going on, uh, Kang is leading Ravana. She's behind him. Just ahead of them, a green soldier fires a shot at Kang. He tucks and rolls to dodge the blast, and uh, he pushes a, a button on his uh, belt. He has a force field. He activates a force field, uh, after the first thing he did is uh, he rolls to dodge the blast. He pushes a button on his belt, activates the force field, and uh, he uh, jumps up to sh shoot. But while this is going on, he ducked the blast that was meant for him, and uh, instead of hitting him, he moved out of the way. It hit Rabona, and she's killed. And uh, the, uh, by this point, the music track is uh, saying, K Sarah, Sarah, which is irony, you know, K Sarah, Sarah. In, uh, uh, while she's getting fucking killed. Kane comes up blasting and kills the soldier. She, he looks back and sees Ravana lying dead on the ground. He crawls over to her, removes his helmet. He's, uh, he's in his mid-twenties and uh, cradles the body of Ravana, screaming at the sky. So this is early in his, uh, in his uh, life. He's in his mid twenties. Uh, he he had like stolen Ravana from his cousin. That, that's uh, later in the, in the story, and she was like uh, the uh, uh, like the arranged uh, bride of his cousin. His cousin was supposed to be, uh, be heir to the throne, and uh, cradles the body of Ravana, screaming at the sky. He pulls her up against him and cries over her. What? Well, uh, here's the uh, uh, Doris Day track again. Whatever will be, will be, the future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera, what will be, will be. And I'm not auditioning my singing, I'm, I'm just reading this shit, okay? More reverse space travel. This time we pass eternity, whose shape is identical to a mortise. So that, uh, Marvel has a character called Eternity. And it was my idea to make Eternity, like, mm, I'm not going to say back to the battle scene. Uh, so, uh, during Nathaniel's life, a lot of shit happens. And it's all leading up to some certain something. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. If you're following me and if you know the history of the character, then you might have figured it out. Otherwise, never mind. Don't worry about it. Back to the battle scene. At the same point as the beginning of the last battle scene sequence, like a do-over. All right, so we're, we've we've seen Ravana die. All right, he jumped out of the way. He should, he probably he will wish for the rest of his life he hadn't. The shot was meant for him. He jumped out of the way. She got killed by a shot meant for him. All right, so now we've done all that. We've gone through space again, shown some uh, freaky shit in space. You know, just for a transition. You know, like to like cleanse the palate of what we just saw. And uh, now we're uh, starting over where we were, like a do-over. 